Board Gosh Energy, proud sponsors of the GAA All Ireland Senior Hurling Championship and GAA Legends Tour Series of Crow Park. Hashtag Hurling to the Core. Hello and welcome to the Throw In Independent Dot GA podcast in association with Board Gosh Energy. I'm Will Slattery and I'm delighted to be joined for our bumper championship preview, as always, by Michael Verney. Michael, hello. How's it going? Well, Jez, it's it's almost it's unreal. Like we've barely got time to rest, and now we're ready to go for championship. Imagine what it's like for the players. We're only talking about. It. Imagine what it's like for players and management. Do I say it was like a day's downtime, and then you were going again? I know. I'm surprised you even had time for your championship haircut. You've been so flat out. I know you finally. No, I, I I promised it, and it's almost like a psychological thing that you need to kick into. You need to just up things a small little gear here. Get a little kind of championship haircut. Be ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Set the table for what's to come, and we have such a great few months to come. Really looking forward to it. All. What are you looking forward to the most as we look ahead to the football and hurling championships? Uh, I suppose if you compare it to last year's winter championship, uh, that was it was you know it was played in different conditions. It was a bit kind of miserable. Uh, you know, it was dark at five o'clock in the evening. The floodlights were on for most games. It's it's raining outside as I look in Borough at the moment, but I'm hoping that most Saturday and Sundays it'll be, you know, prime conditions. Like, if you looked at the scoring during the league, it's obviously one of the first times the league has ever been played in summer conditions. Look at the games we had, at free-flowing games. You'd imagine the summer is going to, going to be the same. Uh, it'll be real free-flowing hurling. And I expect it to be way tighter than it was in the league. Like, there's not going to be... Like, if you're getting a yard off your man in the league, you're not going to be getting a yard off him in the championship. Championship is just different. Uh, there was nothing really on the line in the league. Everything is on the line in championship. So, definitely expecting... Uh, more physicality, uh, still high scoring games, but definitely more physicality, more kind of robust kind of challenges. And I expect referees to let things flow a bit more. Championship is a spectacle, and I think referees will allow games to be a spectacle. If that means they have to be a bit liberal with the rules, listen, they've been liberal with the rules for the last 20 or 25 years, so I don't see that changing too much. Yeah, well, we're delving into the hurling uh, runners and riders in just a little bit with um, Frank Roach and John Milan. But first, we're going to discuss football on the throne and association with Board Gosh Energy. And we're delighted to have Colin Keys and Dick Clerkin with us, guys. How are things? How are you? Well, well, well. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on, guys. And uh, Dick, I suppose going into the championship, I think most people have it maybe pegged as a two horse race at this juncture in terms of ultimate honours, Dublin and Kerry. You know, how, how do you split them? Because it's funny, like, Dublin are the six-time champions, but, you know, listening to people in the build-up and reading a lot of the previews, a lot of people seem to be leaning towards Kerry as the favourites going into this. Would you Would you go down that route? Well, there's a, I suppose there's a, lot of, there's a lot going on there in terms of why people are thinking Kerry, because on one hand, they want to see somebody else win it. And it's not an anti-Dublin thing. It's, it's like in any supporter of, of your sport you want a competitive you don't want to see the same when it's not good for the sport so I think people at this stage they want somebody else even maybe non-Kerry fans would like to see a change to the top because what it also does then it sort of it maybe brings Dublin back a wee bit from this unbeatable type team and it, and it brings other teams that might think yeah, I'm a bit closer to Kerry than I am Dublin so it gives them a sense of well you know what there's an all Ireland opportunity for us um, whereas you know if Dublin been so far ahead for the last number of years it just seemed out of reach so I think it's it's really just a sort of an anxiousness for, for some, somebody else to to be claiming up the steps because you know it's not good for the sport but yet Kerry are now coming it's not just you know not just not just pulling that optimism out of the skate or seeing a team that are really coming to their milk in terms of that those young players coming out of the minor teams physically and now the change of approach this year. So it's not just based on, on wanting to, to see a sort of a pipe dream or wanting to see a team defeat Dublin. They actually now see a team in Kerry that realistically can. Yeah, Colin, because when you look at it, and maybe you go back to 2019, the last time these two teams met in the championship and how close and competitive those games are, and you take it to 2021 and ask the question, is, is this Kerry team better? And as Dick outlined there, they certainly look like they've matured a bit in certain areas with their younger players. And then ask the inverse question, is this Dublin team worse and no McCaffrey Paul Mannion stepped away question marks over Stephen Cluxon's involvement you know they had a truncated build up with Desi Farrell missing the league like it, it's hard to make an argument that they're as good even as they are or is that overly you know maybe negative uh, yeah they've certainly lost some key players in Mannion and Jack McCaffrey but as we saw last year that that damage was uh was mitigated uh, with the arrival of Robbie McDade. Now, I'm not saying he's, you know, Jack McCaffrey or that Paddy Small is Paul Mannion either, far from it, but those players will improve and others have consistently lifted their game. And in relation to Kerry, I, I just can't get my 
head away from and the memory of Thurless in the league match earlier this year and how easily Dublin took them for four goal chances, especially especially the three in the first half. And it really looked, and Kerry did, obviously Kerry did really well to come back. But the manner in which Dublin scored goals and built goals that day, uh, the long patient build-ups and then the injection of pace and that backdoor move with Kieran Kilkenny and Conor Callaghan that has caught out teams so, so much. So maybe, you know, maybe Dublin aren't quite, maybe they're not progressing as much as they were through 2017, through 2018 and 2019 in particular, maybe not. And I certainly believe they got a softer All-Ireland last year with what happened uh, in the Ulster and Munster Championships with Donegal and uh, Kerry uh, falling at those particular hurdles. But I do think it's a bit like it's a bit like an indoor track race. Uh, you can get on Dublin's shoulder, but can you get around them on the last bend? It's always difficult. You could be on their shoulder as Kerry were in 2019, but it's that final couple of steps to get by them. They really are the smartest team around. And I think that counts for a lot, even this year. And uh, notwithstanding Cook, Stephen Cluxon's what looks like his probable absence this year, and you know Dean Rock hasn't resurfaced yet, and that's a concern. They have Evan Comerford and Cormac Costello ready to step in there. So that's Dublin's strength in that they they do even if they do lose key players, <coughs> and none none more key than Stephen Cluxton, obviously. But Evan Comerford is close to being, he's a top five goalkeeper in the game. He's right up there with with many of the best other goalkeepers in the game. So that's the level that they have, that it doesn't damage them. Uh, departures do not damage them like other teams. But I have in my mind, and we can say the league wasn't uh, everything it should have been and that it was open and uh, a bit cavalier in ways. But that first half and third us really suggested to me that Dublin still have an edge over Kerry. Yeah. Just on what you're asking, Will, as well, like it's because they're champions, we're always looking to try and find holes and make maybe holes bigger than they act than they actually are. Um, and that's just the nature of it. The same with Roger Federer when he was dominating in tennis, or anybody who's dominated. You're tr- looking to try and pick holes through them. But like, if you're looking at like who can you pick more holes through, Kerry or Dublin? I'd say you can definitely pick more holes through Kerry. There's definitely more doubts about Kerry. Whereas with Dublin, as Colm says, down the home stretch, when it really matters, you know exactly what you're going to get from them. Even if the quality uh, on paper looks like it has dropped, as a collective, it doesn't look like they've dropped much in the last couple of years at all. Yeah, I know Colin making the point there about Stephen Cluxton. It would be such a classic Stephen Cluxton thing to just recede into the background with no statements, no, no fanfare, not even mentioning anything. Just never reappears. We never hear from him again. Well, uh, Morris Fitzgerald, 20 years ago, played his last game for Kerry in the 2001 All-Ireland Final. And uh, we're still waiting on his retirement statement mm-hmm. uh, or the acknowledgement that he's actually retired from intercounty football. And I think in 20 years' time, we'll be waiting for Stephen Cluxton's too. I think it's very, very similar. You won't be hearing it. You won't be hearing it confirmed either. He's just going to exit very, very quietly in that understated way that he that he, that he uh, carried out his career. So I, I think that's probably what we're facing. Yeah, and it's funny, uh, the year where Dermot Connolly, will he commit, will he won't commit? I'm sure uh, Daddy Frow will be asked about this at every press event until we get a kind of a firm answer. But Dick, I suppose, if we take it at Dublin and Kerry 1 and 2, who's number three for you? Who's the team that could upset the, you know, this order? Because it's funny, going into the championship last year, everyone was thinking Dublin Kerry just before Christmas, it's going to be unbelievable under lights. It didn't, didn't happen in the end. So who are you looking at from, from the best of the rest to maybe potentially emerge as a challenger? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm struggling to, struggling to concentrate now after I and Verney's tight collectibles in the background there. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. Now. I'm, I'm intrigued to see what they are. Wrestling figure. We'll, we'll do a tour. We'll do a tour someday. We will, tour. We will. Uh, but listen, I, listen I, I, there's no team, to be honest with you, has the has done enough to step out. You could throw a blanket over over the next five or six. Like you're really talking Mayo. Um, if you're if it's based on form and consistency, maybe Mayo. But you have to caveat that they were Division Two. Um, Donegal, Tyrone, Monaghan, Armagh, like you, you get Galway, Cork. A lot of teams there would 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 fear neither when they were, 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 were if you match them against each other. So I, I don't think any even Kildare. You know they'll. Be sort of by by going back up and, and showing a bit of steel in the way that they've done that. So listen, as I say, there's there's half a dozen teams there that's the reality is that the way the 
the All Ireland series matches up. It could have been a year that any of those teams could have been saying, right, well, there's a, there's a path to an All Ireland final here because Kerry and Dublin are going to meet in the semi final. But the fact that those two teams are split, it's it's looking like you know two teams will will will, will find the way to a semi final, but no further because I think there is a, a, a significant gap based on what we've seen. You know, there's there's potential there in, in Donegal, but. Michael Murphy, I think he'll be fit. I think he, there's a long enough gap and that they're, they're wise enough to know that they have to mind on and probably rest the down game because it doesn't, doesn't look like down's going to put up much of a fight and that he'll be okay. But even with that, there's just still too many questions to, to bridge that gap, which now is now looking sizable between uh, between Kerry and uh, down and the likes of Tony Gold. Throne, you know, work in progress. And then you've got the likes of Monaghan, Arma. Uh, Mayo, I think Mayo still, I think there's a bit of a surprise package. Uh, Killian O'Connor, big question mark. You know, how bad is that injury? If, if he could, they can stay in the game long enough that he can come back at a decent level of fitness into a sort of an All-Ireland semi-final or Connacht final, possibly they're back in the picture. If he's not, I'm sorry, you just have to, I wouldn't just say write them off, but, but close to it because there's nobody else within that pack he could have the confidence in to say, right, they're going to step into the breach and get that sort of 1-3, one, 1-4 one, consistently on the big days. Yeah, even if you look back to the All Ireland final, the impact he had in the first half, claiming some yeah. of those marks and some of his movement. So, Colin, you know, an Achilles injury, I think we're all going to assume he, he's very unlikely to feature at any stage. Like, does that for you end Mayo's challenges for an All Ireland? Yeah. Connacht, you know, with Galway and Ross Collin both getting relegated, you, you could say they probably are still the favourites there. But would you say they're out of the All Ireland race if Kenny O'Connor can't feature? Uh, I. I think probably so, Will. Although injuries like that, there's a strange dynamic around injuries like that. First of all, I would think Killian O'Connor is most certainly out of the championship. In fact, I think he'd be doing well to get back in for next year's league if it starts at the conventional time because any Achilles operation, and I obviously haven't been qualified if it's a, if it's a full or partial, partial tear, but any time you open up that area, uh, uh, you're looking at a long, long stretch. And uh, the understanding maybe is that it is... Uh, that it is a significant tear. So that leaves him out uh, for quite a long time. And there is quite a recovery path for that, uh, for, for an Achilles tear of any of any uh, description. So, as I said, injuries of a strange dynamic. I remember thinking uh, in February 2014, when Colm Cooper's uh, cruciate was diagnosed, and Colm Cooper was after coming off uh, three or four magnificent seasons, certainly 2013, uh, he he set a really, really high standard. And, 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 you know, Dublin had won the All-Ireland that year, but Cooper was magnificent. And he was an All-Star, I think, in three of the previous four four years. That's the standard he had taken his game to uh, at that stage. And then his knee went. And then you thought, hmm, that's the end of Kerry. And similar conversations around that uh, are, are, are there for Mayo now. Now, notwithstanding that Mayo haven't won an All-Ireland in so long and that their chase is, the chase is still on for them. Kerry were in a different situation. But other players stepped up for Kerry, Paul Ganey, James O'Donoghue, uh, Stephen O'Brien, players like that stepped up. And that will probably happen in Mayo too, that players who have looked to Killian for and left the responsibility to him to lead the attack really raise their game. And younger players, Tommy Conroy, Ryan O'Donoghue, Jason Doherty could be back in the mix. Maybe it's Darren Cohen's time to step up and come in. But I do think, and I take Dick's point, the 1 4, the 1 8, even 1 9 that Killian O'Connor scores. I mean, his sense of a goal is like no other player for, for Mayo. And there are very few in the game. Maybe Conor Callahan and David Clifford have that goal sense around them too, to make a goal and conjure a goal out of nothing. And just his, his ability at close range to score goals. But I do think other players will step up and, and have to step up. And we will see. Uh, we will see more coming to the fore for Mayo and assuming that responsibility. But you look back to the end, the end of the Russ Common game that they lost in in Connacht in 2019, and the indecision around freeze, and they missed some crucial freeze, and really a lot of uncertainty around who would take the freeze. And that's something that might undo them more than anything else. Is that when it comes to those crunch freeze that Killian has put over routinely so so often. Uh, I, I think that's where they will find most trouble, obviously. Yeah, and just the flip side of that point around the injuries, the only championship game Dublin have lost in the last seven, eight years, Kieran Kilkenny missed that season with the cruciate. He hasn't actually lost a championship game since 2012, the kind of the fulcrum of their attack, and it was a big loss uh, that day. Michael, it's funny, you know, 
doing the football preview, and it's kind of a shame in many ways that you kind of have to focus on the big teams, the nature of it with no back door. There's so many teams I'd love to be, you know, digging into. Could they maybe go on a run if they got a, you know, a, on a run in the qualifiers? Even your own county, Offaly or, or Derry, who beat them in the league final. There's a, a lot of teams who, unfortunately, the league was probably the sum total of, of their championship ambitions, given some of the tough draws they have. It's just, it's a shame that in the hurling, they get a second chance. I know we've talked about it before, but you'd love if there was a, if, the, if it just could have maybe fit in a couple of extra games for some of these teams. Yeah, there's a lot of counties that are going to be finished this weekend. We're previewing a championship and on Monday morning, a lot of teams will be out of the championship and won't have another game, which is a bit of a shame. I know Martin Brettany wrote in the, the Brettany beat last week about how Clare, he gave Clare as a, a classic example of why the qualifiers should have stayed in this year's championship. And I know there's probably uh, pressure on time and things like that and COVID-related uh, problems with that but it would be great like Claire go down to Kerry on Saturday evening it's like that's an awful first round draw for a team that nearly got up to division one so you're looking at you know a top 10 team that are probably going to be gone by Saturday evening barring a massive upset and based on what we're saying here with Dublin one and Kerry two it would be you know absolutely monumental upset for someone like Claire to, to win that game so they're going to be probably gone out of championship on Saturday evening and there's going to be a lot of other decent other decent team gone as well and teams that had the opportunity to go on a run so yeah it, it, it is it is unfortunate that's just the nature of it I suppose it's it's a throwback to, to you know the knockout days of the 90s where you just get one shot at it but it's unfortunate because there are teams that uh, I know we always talk about momentum, but there are teams that just can go on a run. You get maybe a soft enough qualifier draw, then all of a sudden you build confidence and get moving again. Um, just something that Colin was saying there as well, from a, a Mayo point of view, I do think it's interesting. And at least they have, you know, they've known about O'Connor's injury for a couple of weeks. They play Sligo, which, with due respect to Sligo, they will beat, they'll beat Sligo. They'll play Leitrim, they'll beat Leitrim. At least they have a chance to bed in uh, who's going to be hitting the freeze, uh, have that well decided by the time they play a Connacht final. So at least they have a bit of time on their side, no more than Kerry had with the Gooch. They have you know, the guts of a month at least to find a replacement and maybe find a new focal point to their attack. But yeah, it's, it, is, it is unfortunate that so many teams will just, their story will be, will be finished by, by Saturday or Sunday evening. Yeah, Dick, and if you look, I thought some teams you could make an impact. You know, your own county, Monaghan, Armagh, on that side of the draw, two of the teams that showed some form towards the end of the league. Like, there, there is a great opportunity there for one of those teams to make an Ulster final. And we were, you were talking about Donegal and Tyrone probably aren't at, the, at their peak either. There's a great opportunity there for someone to maybe push on and, and claim a provincial title there. Yeah, and I think so. Honestly, I think we all fall into the trap, more so than we, how we started this chat about focusing on the, the top teams and you know, at the end of the day, irrespective of what championship format you come with, the vast majority of teams know that, you know, their year is not about an All-Ireland final. And by virtue of that, all the supporters attached to those teams, they're not thinking about All-Ireland titles. So it doesn't really matter about the championship format. It's about, well, what can those counties aspire to within the format that it is? And and, and on that basis, there's there's an awful lot to look forward to for a lot of counties in terms of the competitiveness that's, that's there. And there will, like there was last year, the Calvin and the Tipperary stories, there will be similar stories this year. It could be Armagh, it could be, it could be Monaghan getting back to an Ulster final, hopefully winning one for the first time in five or six years. Um, it could be Derry, you know, who everyone's starting to look to see. Are they going to finally sort of wake up from where they've been over the last few years? You know, Offaly, I'm looking at Offaly taking on Louth. You know, that's a big game after, you know, a very encouraging league. But if they were to lose that, yeah, people, my people saying, oh, last week's... Uh, game for Offaly was their championship what was it hell they go and lose against Louth nobody will care about what they've done in the league they'll be saying what the heck did you just go and lose to Louth for because there's a championship run there for Offaly they, they could set up another big game with Kildare who we know over the years can be very flaky and be got at a championship level so I think there's an awful lot we can look forward to and yeah let's look forward to the all Ireland series if and when it comes in the likelihood of a of a Kerry Dublin final but I'm really looking forward to a lot of those uh, sort of sub battles and plots throughout the province no more so than my own province which at this stage you could pick anyone out of Derry, Armagh, Monaghan Donegal and Tyrone to go and win it and in terms of the final makeup, it'll be a good man that could predict that at this stage Yeah Colm is there any team you're looking forward to seeing from you know outside of those you know, top tier that we talked about that you think could go on a run or just intrigued to see how they might turn up in the championship? I think Galway are the team that I'd be most intrigued about. Uh, you know, the, the manner of their defeat to Monaghan. Um, how did they come out of that? That's that's a big question uh, for me because there's no doubt there is, there's potential there. Um, 
I think you saw in the, in that game, Matthew Tierney, how good he was, you know, out around midfield, but also win full forward. They brought on a young player called Cottle Sweeney, uh, Rob Finnerty. They have so many talented young players. Uh, and I'm I'm just curious to what they can get them out of themselves over over the next few weeks because uh um you know there is an opportunity there. There was an opportunity for them last year in Connacht. And if the, the current rules around cynical play were in force then as they are now, I think you might have been looking you might be looking at uh, Galway as defending Connacht champions because uh, Sean Kelly, who's a very, very good defender who likes to attack a lot, was taken down in the last minute and that would have been a penalty under the current rules and we can assume Killian O'Connor would have scored it. So that's how close they were to Mayo last year. Um, they, they should have beaten Monaghan in, in, in Clonus and I'm still at a loss as to, as to why they didn't close out that game uh, when, when they should have and then they were just beaten by a smarter team that day. But I do think that they can come again uh, if their spirit is right and if their morale is strong, and that's that's the question we'll side about Galway right now, is that can they can they pull it together quickly enough and uh kick on? Because I do think there's a potential all Ireland semi final place for them, place from there. And obviously that'll be a shot against Dublin at that stage. So the most interesting subplots are always going to be in, in Ulster because there's such a, a variance of potential champions and Dick has mentioned it there you know we say well Monaghan and Armagh are on the right side of the draw well, given Monaghan and Armagh's league form you'd say well maybe Tyrone and Donegal are happy enough to be to be avoiding either of those teams right now and Derry obviously have come into the mix with a really really strong uh, league performance and they have a really strong spine to their team uh, right down the middle. Obviously, Conor Glass has come back from AFL, but Shane McGuigan has developed into a really, really good forward. He's among the best forwards in the province now. And Gareth McInnes and players like that. So they're in a really good position as well. So there are a lot of teams vying there. I don't think Donegal and Tyrone are that far ahead of the rest. In fact, I think there has been a levelling leveling off. Obviously, Armagh lost heavily last year. But I think of all the subplots, Ulster, Ulster is the one. But the team I am watching for progress is Galway. Hmm. And then playing obviously Ross Common, the, the two teams that went down. It, it's an interesting uh, fixture in, in that sense. And Michael, what about what about a team like Cork, who obviously had the the shock of the championship last year, beating Kerry, had a mixed league, obviously lost to Tipperary subsequently in that Munster final. Doesn't seem to be anyone talking them up this year about you know potentially causing a shock or, or doing much. But you know, what do you what do you make of where they're at going into the championship? Yeah, I've seen them a couple of times uh, they were brilliant in the first 20 minutes against Kildare and then Kildare totally got on top and they kind of faded out of the game. Uh, they obviously they had a, a good, it was a good result against Westmead because it was a right good uh, relegation final, I suppose you call it, and they put up a big score. They've since lost uh, Cotton O'Mahony. He's out for the summer. Uh, I think he's out for 10 weeks with a hamstring injury. Uh, Kieran Sheehan has had to retire, which is uh, sad news for him and I think for for Gaelic football in general, because we probably haven't got to see his, his full potential. I think he was probably the last remaining link back to that 2010 All-Ireland win. Uh, there, there's, they, they show flashes of... Uh, I've seen them at different times. I saw them against Clare as well, actually, down in Cusick Park. And at times, you just think that they can be very, very dangerous going forward. And then there's other times where there's a 15 or 20-minute period kind of just passes them by almost. Um, that was obviously a, a massive shock against, against Kerry last year, where they remained in the game. Kerry's tactics probably allowed them to remain in the game, maybe that they shouldn't have still been in. Um, but they'll be like they'll be primed probably for a Munster final. You'd imagine to get to a Munster final. Do do we see a shock kind of happen again? It's very unlikely, I would think, especially if they're going to be down a couple of bodies. But there's always a fear in Kerry over and last year reignited it anyway, over they will never look too far past Munster as a result of you know what Cork did last year and what they've done in previous years. I, I still think they're they're coming, they're coming, but I think they're still a small bit off. And even being beaten by Tipperary in last year's Munster final, if they'd kicked on from that Kerry result, won a won a Munster title and been competitive in an All Ireland semi final, I think we'd be looking at a different proposition. But they've kind of built and then maybe taken a step backwards and they're building again and there's a couple of little step backwards. They would have been looking at promotion in the league, not been in a you know a relegation semi final. So still think they're they're a they're a bit off, but they're on the right track. But it's probably maybe a bit slower than they would like it to be, I'd say. Yeah, another interesting team to watch. And Dick, just before we let you go, we might just get your ultimate prediction then for, for the campaign. Who do you think ultimately will come out on top? 
Well, across the provinces, I think Mayo still have enough. You know, I still think they're, they're, they're enough young blood coming through to to to, to make up for the loss of Killian O'Connor. Obviously, Kerry Dublin, easy enough picks in in, in Munster and, and and Leinster. And listen, I'm I'm sort of buoyed with a bit of confidence now in Monaghan, which probably didn't have going into the league. Um, there's there's enough young blood has come through and, and proven themselves. You know, great to see Jack back. And I think if if Banty now can sort of see that the talent. In terms of scoring threat that he has in, in, in Jack, Conor McCarthy and Conor McManus, while he's still fit and able, if he can get the best out of those three, which which nobody has done to date on the pitch at the same time, I think there's a good enough ethos and workman like and, and good protection for the back that they could really, you know, take a take a provincial. And then listen, I'm I'm going for Kerry for 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 the for the for the major honours at this stage. I think it's it's their time. I think, you know, Clifford's just borderline unstoppable and if he can keep him fit and keep enough ball to him which you know I think they recognise keep him in the right place and don't have him burn up energy down the pitch I think it's it's Kerry's there to, to, to take this year mm, Interesting Well thanks for joining us Dave we look forward to checking in with you throughout the championship Alright folks have a good day See you See you Dick. See you, Dick. Yeah so Vernie I'll go to you next you know who do you think is going to come out on top in the provinces and then ultimately in the All-Ireland race Yeah I go along with Dick I still think Mayo might just have enough uh like it's not as if, as Colin made the point earlier, it's not as if Galway are pulling up trees everywhere or Roscommon are as well. Uh, both have been relegated to Division 2. That's actually historically a good sign for, for winning Connacht, funnily enough. But uh, Mayo have gone back up to Division 1. They're obviously going to be missing their marquee forward. But I still think I still think they might just pull through. Um, I, I, they're not realistic All-Ireland contenders without Killian O'Connor. But I think they will Connacht, uh, Dublin, Leinster, Kerry, Munster, um, Ulster's intriguing um, just looking down through the draw there's so many like when Donegal probably beat down they're playing Derry next uh, which is just that's that's a really really intriguing tie as well probably go I'd probably go for something on the other side of the draw I'd probably go for maybe an Armagh who maybe surprised a few people by staying up in Division 1 this year so I, I go I go Armagh and Ulster but that's by far the most intriguing province like there's, as Dick said, there's several different parents that could end up in the final. I think that's why it makes what's why it's the most exciting province each year, realistically. And the All Ireland? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd I'd stick with Dublin for the All Ireland. I think maybe we're trying to uh, we're trying to pick holes maybe in something that's not there. They will be beaten eventually, uh, but I'm not sure defensively if Kerry are where they need to be coming up against the Dublin. As Callum says. Like you know, if Dublin hadn't taken the foot off to some extent in that league game, they probably would have won by six or seven. So I'll still stick with Dublin. It's funny it shows how much well, whatever coverage I've been reading that I was actually surprised that someone's picking Dublin at this stage because I, I feel like I've seen so many people pick Kerry. Colin, I'll give you the last word. Then who do you think is going to come out on top in the provinces and in the All Ireland? Well, obviously Kerry and Dublin and in, in in Munster and Leinster, and I've mentioned previously. I just I just have something that Galway might be in a position to recover when they realise that the Monaghan defeat wasn't as all that bad and that it's not as big a deal to lose your Division 1 status. If you if you look at Mayo actually slipped out of Division 1 last year and I always remember James Horne's reaction afterwards and take a, knock a breeze out of him and they went on and you know contested an All-Ireland final right up to 10 minutes after half time when they were when they were in that game and got so much out of last season. I do think Killian O'Connor's uh, influence will be will be really really missed and I know I mentioned that players will step up and they will step up and there's no doubt about that but I think there's huge improvement in Galway if their mindset is right if they come out of that defeat realising okay uh, we're a lot better than what we actually even think we are because they have a lot of talent there and they'll have Do- Damien Comer back albeit he's played so little in the championship uh, over the last two to three years, so he's missed a lot of football. So maybe not so much to bank on him, but he is a presence, and he does he does take watching. And an Ulster, Donegal have stopped short of an All Ireland semi final for for various different reasons over the over the last uh, three years. Tyrone beat them in Bally Buffet, Mayo beat them in Castlebar, and last year was you know against Cavan, and that's in the Ulster final. That's when you really suspect about their, their big game mentality that when it comes to it, do, can they can they really see at home? I still think they're the best team in Ulster. Um, they'll obviously, I think they'll beat down. I think they'll be playing Tyrone and then All-Ireland. Uh, or they'll be playing Derry, obviously, after that. That's going to be a real challenge for them. But I do think they will also win that game. And then questionable whether they beat Tyrone. They have the edge over them in recent meetings, both in league and championship. 
uh, certainly last year. Uh, I think they'll progress to an Ulster final and this time they, they will win it. So that's my four. Galway, Donegal, Kerry, Dublin and like Michael, I think we're looking for things in Dublin that probably aren't there. I saw enough from Dublin in the league, albeit Galway pushed them hard and you know Roscommon gave them a little bit of trouble from time to time. But in that first half against Kerry, how they opened them up and I have I still have suspicions about that Kerry defence, I have to say. You know, albeit Clifford, David Clifford and Sean O'Shea and Dermot O'Connor, those three are the, the golden players of the generation of all Ireland minor wins, certainly the latter end. Uh, and you know, they're all they've all strengthened, they've all matured, they've all, you know, you can see in their league form they're a lot better. But I just my suspicions about the Kerry defence remains. And I think Kilkenny, Connor Callahan, I think you'll see a better Paddy Small this year and Niall Scully. And you'll have Brian Howard back, who missed a lot of last year's championship. I think there's a lot going for Dublin still. It'll certainly set up to be an intriguing championship. Colin, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Will. It's now time to turn our attention to the Hurling Championship and the throne in association with Board Gosh Energy. We're delighted to have Frank Roach and John Milan on to preview everything over the next couple of weeks and months. And John, I might start with yourself. It's funny, when we were doing the football preview, we kind of came to the conclusion that it was a Dublin Kerry 1-2. Are we looking at a Limerick Galway 1-2 for you at the moment heading into the Hurling Championship or how do you look at the landscape at this juncture? Yeah, look, I'd say it's, it's safe to say that you know, that prediction at the present moment of time is probably right, you know, going off a, off a, off a Galway's league campaign and going off of the success that Limerick had the last couple of years and, you know, the manner in which they beat Cork um, in their second last game in the, in the, in the, in the Alliance League. Um, I think that's a fair reflection of, of where both these teams are. Uh, Possibly after that, then I would give Waterford uh, being being Waterford being a close third, uh, and possibly then I would have maybe uh, Tipperary, Kilkenny, and then possibly Cork and then then Wexford, you know. Mm. And Frank, it's interesting, you know. Obviously, no back door in the football. There isn't the hurling, but so for you, like, how important is it for teams to go through the front door in the hurling championship if they want to claim the ultimate prize? Is it a bigger deal? Do you think, or or do you think teams can rebound? Obviously, Waterford rebounded and got to the final. Limerick went through the front door last year and, and won it. Well, they can rebound, but I suppose look, the schedule suddenly becomes a lot more uh, difficult and problematic if you lose. Uh, and if you lose early on, I mean, it's probably not quite as compressed as it was last year. But if anyone who lost in early November last year, they were going week on week right through the month um, if they were to get to an All-Ireland semi-final. And in fair, well, Waterford got to a Munster final, rebounded very impressively against Clare afterwards. But uh, so it, it is doable. And it's in fairness, it's a huge advantage for hurling teams and hurling managers preparing for a championship because you've got so many of their football counterparts there at the moment looking at a fixture this weekend that or the following weekend they may win and then they realize well that's it you know they're not their season is going to be over and in a way what happened in the few weeks beforehand was more important and you can see that i think in hurling i mean right through the league everyone was talking about championship 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 you know, it was about getting the building blocks in place during the league for what was coming in July or the last weekend in June. And so it is a huge plus. Just on the point you made about whether it's a two-horse race, I mean, it's fair enough to say Limerick and, and Galway are definitely the two standout teams at the moment. But the Hurling Championship has been very different to its football counterpart for the last five, six years. I mean, if you go through... If you go through Dublin's six in a row period, three other counties have reached All Ireland finals in that period. You know, Mayo and Kerry have come close. Throne got to a final maybe against the head and didn't come close. In that same period, we've had four winners of the Lee McCarthy and five counties in total of contested finals. So, you know, there is a window there for someone to make major strides and improvement in the next few weeks. And suddenly we could be talking about them as potential finalists, if not, if not winners. No, it does set it up nicely. We might look at Munster first, Michael. Obviously, Waterford Clare this weekend, Tipperary out the winners, and then Cork Limerick next Saturday night or Saturday week, rather. Um, you know, which team in Munster at the moment are you most intrigued about, or you think could go on a run, or even you know one of the favourites that you think is in a good place? Like, how are you looking at it? I'm intrigued by all of them, to be honest with you. Um, like, if you look at Clare. Uh, there's obviously a fairly kind of tumultuous winter and everybody talking about all, all the 
off-field activity and the negative vibe there, and then they're beaten by Antrim in the first round of the league. Then all of a sudden, by the end of the league, you're like you're almost filled with optimism coming in by the end of the league and coming into championship and how close the league is to championship. There, I'm sure they're like really look at relishing kind of the task ahead at the weekend and the fact that that they maybe are been written off and have been written off in some quarters. Then you're looking at a Waterford team where I saw them against Tipperary and it just it was such a free flow and attack. Probably the, the any problems or question marks are probably in defence, but. They can put up a huge score um, if they ha- if they have everybody available to them. Now, whether they will have everyone available to them this weekend or not is still in doubt. With probably Connor Prunty and Jamie Barron, the, the two that there's most question marks over. Like Tipper All Ireland champions then in 2019, and you know had a disappointing season last year. Sheedy is still there in his third year. Uh, there's no pressure of back to back or anything now. You're, you're just wondering like, sure, this is probably the last stand for. The likes of Paddy Maher, not saying it's the last stand for Brendan Maher, a couple more, but they're de- definitely leaning towards the end. Noel McGrath, Seamus Callanan, and that's without even talking about, you know, the All Ireland champions. And then a Cork team who uh, at times were brilliant during the league, and then at other times, like their kind of deficiencies were like laid bare for everybody to see. So there's, I think, like Munster is really, really intriguing, and I think that. That Clare Waterford game this weekend is an absolute belter of a game to, to start off with. Uh, whoever gets through to that Munster semi final will have a game under their belt and will fancy their chances coming up against a tip side who often who were steady and consistent during the league, but maybe uh, not as dominant as they were throughout 2019. So, yeah, Munster, there's so many games to look forward to there. Like Cork will fancy their chances against Limerick. Uh, I think Clare will fancy their chances against Waterford. Both of those would fancy their chances against Tipperary. None of them, like, they'd be happy to be on the opposite side of the draw to Limerick, in particular Tipperary. But uh, just there's so, so many games there, so many intriguing ties to look forward to. Yeah, John, what about even this weekend with your own county playing Clare? You know, what, what is the mood there? Michael referenced some of the injury concerns, uh, but obviously, obviously the end of the league as well was very impressive that went over Tipperary. So, like, what, what's the feeling on the ground there? Yeah, it's, it's, it's extremely low-key. Uh, not really much talk about the match. You now look when when you when you go through the rankings and the way I the breakdown of the rankings, you know, Clare Clare are possibly six number seven, possibly below Tipperary, Kilkenny, Cork, but they in a one off game, a Brian Lone Clare team, they are dangerous. And we've seen that how they've how they've ended the league. Went up to Parnell Park. Was very, very good up in Parnell Park. Um, and you know coming off a, a very good win then against Kilkenny in Ennis. So they're coming into this game, uh, you know, with momentum, you know, considering where they were at the start of the league. But I think, you know, there was, there was an overreaction at the start of the league towards Clare. We did mention that. Waterford, on the other hand, you know, the likelihood is the world around Waterford is that Jamie Barron and Conor Prunty won't play. You know, you throw in Ty De Burke is missing as well. All of a sudden, that's the spine of your team from last year. Your full back, your centre back, uh, and your 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 engine in your engine in midfield. You know Jamie Barron, who's been who's been a revelation for Waterford over the course of the last six seven years. You know he's been just Mister Consistent. So, but look, the one thing that they have in their favour is they are missing players, and I think you know the top top teams over the last couple of years that have won all Ireland. You know, it, you know they're able to come over injury setbacks. If they have injuries. Players that can come in, and I think Waterford are building a panel. I think Dean Cavill is building a panel, and all be we might be down a couple of couple of uh, big hitters the weekend. I think we have the caliber of players that can come in um, and, and come in and do a job. You're on the likes of Daryl Lines. You're talking daily. You probably go to to um, centre back if Prunty's out. The big question then is who will go to full back. I know who my full back will be. I put Kevin Moore back there, and then you have the firepower up front. I mean the Shocking up big scores. You've Desi Hodgson, the Bennett brothers, Fagan, Jack Pendergast, as Zemri just touched on it there. You know, it's it's probably nearly a throwback to, to, to our team of the Naughties where where any one of, of six forwards can hurt you on the scoreboard. And, and 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 with that, you know, you can allow for maybe one lad having an off day or another lad having an off day where if four of them perform, you know, there's a, there's a good chance they'll win the game. And I think that's what Waterford have now they have six forwards that are as good as Anton in the country and they have one or two that can come off the bench then and can, can do damage too and that's why I think regardless of who they're missing I still think they're going to be in a good place and I still think they're going to be uh, difficult to beat them again 
Yeah, Frank, and what about the team that will play the winners this weekend? Tipperary, as Michael mentioned there, kind of going in a little bit under the radar, I suppose, of all the teams after the league campaign. Tipperary, I feel like we didn't really discuss them as much as maybe some other teams. For whatever reason, they had a couple of draws, a few wins, a few. Uh, I think they had one defeat potentially, and you know they still have that core of that team that's won three All Ireland titles. You know, are they in a good place? You know, given it isn't back to back, the pressure is off, or has their time come and gone with with that with that core? Well, the funny thing is, actually, they they beat Galway, and everyone is touting talking of <laughs> Galway's chances of you know as being the team best equipped to to take down Limerick. I mean, I, uh, I saw Tipperary in the flesh against Westmead a few weeks back, but, you know, it was very hard to make definitive judgments in that game. They were always going to win it. They won it impressively pulling up. Their bench actually scored very heavily that day. But, you know, that was Seamus Canlan's first, first, first game back. He didn't go particularly well, but Liam Sheedy was delighted afterwards that he'd been able to get 70 minutes into his legs. Um, look, it, it, I think it's still clear that if, if Tipperary are going to win the All-Ireland, they are probably going to still rely relatively heavily on their 30-something old core, like the, you know, uh, the Matters, Porig, Brendan, Seamus Callan, and obviously if he can get back to close to the levels he was at in 2019. Um, we're still waiting for the under-21 and under-20 All-Ireland winners to really make a bigger impression on this team. And, and I'm not too sure if they're fully ready yet to do that. Um, Jason Ford has had a very prolific league. He scored, I think, 441 or something like that. I mean, he's been a big, big player for them. But we're just waiting and wondering. And, you know, the Waterford game, they were ultimately, they were well beaten in that. Uh, but it was the last rounds of the league and they probably, they weren't throwing everything. I would imagine Michael, I think, was at that game live. They weren't throwing everything at it. Um, but they're going to be at a bit of a disadvantage I think the weekend after next because they're going to be playing a team who have 70 minutes in the legs and you know they will need to start relatively quickly in that game Yeah Michael do you want to just come in on Frank's point there like you know what did you make of that tip performance because like how much stock would you put into it uh, yeah, I put a good bit of stock into it from a Waterford point of view. It's hard to know from a tip point of view. I was actually impressed enough with them throughout the league in the sense that I think the worry maybe the last couple of years has been over their defence and I think they had, they shored up a good bit in defence. They weren't, they didn't look all that worried about um, their attacking structure too much. They were mainly focusing throughout the league, I think, on getting a good defensive structure. Then Waterford kind of ripped that apart in the last game. So that would be a bit of a worry. I think what Frank said there is interesting. They are relying on the older guys. They won a 20 all Ireland and under 21 all Ireland. Like there's very few of those guys have been, have been sent in to play. Uh, you're looking at maybe Paddy Cadell potentially and Jake Morris would probably be the only two of that cohort that will play. So they have obviously still placed some faith in, in the older in the older crew. I think to win an All Ireland similar to twenty nineteen, I, I do think they're gonna to have to avoid Limerick to win an All Ireland. I, I don't I don't see them beating Limerick. I just don't think they match up uh, physically well with them. Um uh, so I think if Tipper win an All Ireland, they're probably avoiding Limerick to do it. Uh it's got there it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, that's gonna be a real interesting game. I I do think like if if Waterford get over the weekend, Conor Prunty would probably be back. Jamie Barron would probably be back, and the rest of the Waterford cohort would have, as as the lad said, seventy minutes under the belt. So I think that'd be a real interesting game. There's also the potential of, you know, the two Leans going up against each other, Cattle versus Sheedy, the current tip manager against probably the future tip manager, the next tip manager as well. So um, I I think there's so many subplots. Uh, been ready to be a kind of unfolded in this championship and while Limerick and Cork are or Limerick and Galway are the two kind of front runners there's an awful lot of, of things that could happen in the within the chasing pack so yeah, I think it's very interesting Munster in particular Yeah John just move it maybe move on to the Lancer Championship now you know Galway obviously as we mentioned they're one of the favourites Kenny you know ended up you know jointly winning that league you know how do you rate the Lancer Championship as a whole going into it? Yeah well look I suppose uh, you know, you go into the bookies now and, you know, Galway are, are four to seven, eight to thirteen to uh to win um, to win Leinster. And then you have you have Kilkenny who who, who are second favourites and, and, and Wexford and then you you know you've you have Dublin and Dublin Antrim and Lee. Uh, I, I would I would I would make I would make um Galway strong favourites for Leinster going off of what my eyes have seen over the course of uh course of the last five, six weeks. Now look, we can't 
read a whole lot into some of these some of these league games, but uh, you know, for me, they've been very, 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 very impressive, and I think they're going to be very difficult to beat. I think no disrespect to to Antrim or, or Dublin, I think they're on the right side of of, of the draw, so I, I think they'll they'll possibly come over, get over one of the two of them, and they'll, they'll be straight into an end of final. And I think what they will have in their favour, you know, going into possibly a fixture against either or Antrim or Dublin, just say if it is Dublin, you know, two years ago, Dublin knocked them out up in Parnell Park. So, you know, they'll, that's, that's, that's still in the back of their minds. I think that'll stand to them. And what, what will also stand to them as well is that, you know, losing last year's Leinster, Leinster final when they were in, you know, total control for, for a large part of that game um, to get Sucker punch by, by two goals. So I would make them strong favourites. I think they're going to be very difficult to beat. I like what Shane O'Neill is doing up there. Um, but look, again, you can you can never write off uh, Brian Cody. You know, time and time again, he's come and he's proven people wrong. He did it last winter uh, in the Leinster final. Um, and who's to say he, he, he won't do it again? Wexford, you know... It's 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 hard to know where Wexford are at the moment. I think there's an over alliance on on possibly Lee Chin, Rory O'Connor, and possibly Dio Keith. Those three are key for Wexford. If any one of those three underperforms for Wexford, Wexford won't win. Won't, won't be Kilkenny, and uh, they, they 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 won't uh, they won't they won't win the Leinster final possibly against against Galway. I'd expect Wexford to win the weekend, and I'd expect uh, Dublin to win the weekend. But for me, I think. The clear favourites at the moment are Galway, and I think they're the deserving favourites. Yeah, Frank. In terms of this weekend, you know the Dublin Antrim one is an intriguing one. I know Brendan Cummins has been pretty strong the last couple of weeks, saying he thinks Antrim have a really strong chance there. You know, how would you look at that game? How vulnerable are Dublin to a shock defeat? Do you think? Well, I think they are potentially vulnerable. Uh, I mean, I'd have Dublin as favourites definitely, but I mean, if there is to be a shock in the two matches this weekend, I'd probably see it maybe coming in that one more so than Wexford Leash. Um, I saw Antrim on the first day of the league up in Belfast against Clare and they're, like, they were hugely impressive they were six points down I think after 13 minutes or something but from there on they, they're, they're a real team you can see there's a, there's, a, there's a shape to them there's a strategy the commitment levels were huge they were in Clare's faces from the off and, and watching the full match against Wexford a few weeks later they were, I thought they were even more impressive that day so I mean, in fairness, um, uh, under Conor Gleeson, they've, like they've, they've, uh, they really have come on as a team. They actually finished ahead of Dublin in the league table. I know you can't necessarily judge anything like that, but they got they they produced they got results against the so-called big three teams in that group. Uh, you know, the Clare, Kilkenny, Wexford, uh, and Dublin didn't. And Dublin haven't produced a really compelling performance since that uh, match against Galway in Parnell Park two years ago. Um, Donald Burke has been, you know, I think he's the top scorer in the league. He has really developed as a player. But you're looking at their forward line especially and you're just wondering, is there enough of a cutting edge to them? I think they, they scored four goals in the league campaign. Uh, in their division in 1B, I think only Leash scored less than them in terms of goals. Um, and, and Liam Rush, I think, was relocated to full forward for the second half against Wexford the last day. So it just begs the question, you know, whether Matty Kenny knows exactly where he's going with them in this championship. Um, and, and the danger then, of course, if they were to be shot this weekend, they'd be facing into a potential relegation playoff a week later, which no team in Leinster wants to be facing. Yeah, no, certainly makes for an interesting start. And Michael, another team in action this weekend, Wexford against Leash. You know, I think Wexford being strong favourites, a lot of people expect them to go forward and play Kilkenny. But there is a kind of a view, I think, forming that like that project has probably has reached its apex maybe a couple of years ago. And it, it maybe it, it's not going to be recapturing the great moments that it enjoyed, I think, in year one and maybe year three. You know, what's your view on that? Uh, well, we definitely haven't seen uh, much evidence of an evolution anyway. It had evolved the whole way through. It evolved from 17 through to 19. Um, it kind of stagnated last year. It doesn't look like it's kind of kicked on again. Say in 17 and 18, Sean Murphy was the sweeper. Then Kevin Foley moved into that position, kind of revolutionized it. Uh, 
doesn't look like they still look to be playing very similar to as they were last year. When they went on a run in 17, did a brilliant league and had some big results in the league, even beating Kilkenny for the first time in Nolan Park in a long time. Same in 19. They, they carried the momentum of the league all the way through the championship in 17 and 90. Like they don't have much momentum going into this year's championship. You would they haven't been pulling up trees throughout the league or anything like that. There's no there's no great evidence to suggest that they're going to go on a big run. Um, I, I think they'll get over leash at the weekend. Even though I have, a, I have a piece with Ross King in the paper tomorrow, where he's uh, he's a gas man. He's definitely uh, he's definitely uh, off the cuff. I'd say for an inter county player, uh, actually giving honest opinions and feelings the week of a championship game. Uh, he thinks they he thinks they have a great chance based on the league form. You'd probably have to have to go against that. But like Wexford coming in against Kilkenny, I, that's probably a fifty fifty game realistically if they do get if do get over leash, but. I couldn't see them winning the Leinster final against Galway, who have been their bogey team really uh, under Davy. They've, they've, apart from that draw in, in, I think it was in Salt Hill, they haven't really got a good result against Galway. So I just find it hard to, I find it hard to make a case for Wexford, and I think they've slipped from being probably number three or four in 2019. I think they've slipped well down the peck in order to probably about seven or eight now. And I think it would be, I think it would be a big surprise if they were able to win Leinster even this year. And I, I just I can't see it happening. I just they've introduced a few new players, but just haven't seen and I just haven't seen anything different for, for from them in the in Davies' fifth year. You know he's saying it potentially mightn't be his last year now. You know if they don't produce anything this year, you'd you kind of have to wonder where they're going. Hmm. We might get some predictions now, John. Starting with yourself, who are your two provincial champions, and who do you think will win the All Ireland? Yeah, I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go for Limerick to win Munster. Uh, I just think, uh, you know, I think we were going to be carried away with, with, with one or two of their league results. I think John Coyley, you know, Canork, you know, they know what they're after. You know, they're after winning title after title over the, over the course of the last three years. And I think they'll win, they'll win the Munster Championship again. I think they're the team to beat. Really looking forward to that game against Cork uh, next weekend. But, uh, I just still think that it, that a team to beat. They hold all they hold all the aces, uh, and I think uh, I think they'll they'll win Munster again. Galway, for me, I think you know with a clear favourites to win Leinster. I think, as I said, going on my, my eyes are after seeing the last couple of weekends uh, in the national league. I think it's going to take one hell of a performance by by either a, a, a Kilkenny, a Dublin, or a Wexford if if they're going to take Galway down. Um, so for me, I'm going to go for Galway. And I think I think there's a strong possibility both of them will meet in the final then. Uh, but I think, you know, I think all the focus in Limerick, back to back has never been done before in Limerick. And I think Kylie and uh Kinark, they realise they have a special group of players. Um, and you know, they're very well grounded, these bunch of players. And I think, you know, there's a realisation there that they want to win as much as they can when they can and when the going is good. And I think the going is good now at the, at the, at the present moment of time in Limerick. And I think they're going to achieve back to back. I'm going to go for Limerick when you are. Frank? God, I, I think John has said it all there. Uh, I'm not going to steer too. I'm not going to steer too far from that script. I mean, uh, I think Limerick will win Munster. Uh, I think Galway will win uh, Leinster. And I just think Galway are the only team who might, who might just might stop uh, Limerick when it boils down to it. Uh, but I, look, I mean, I think Limerick deserve, they've earned the uh, kind of the faith of everyone, really, given what we've seen from them over the last several years. The early rounds of the league, I'm not saying you can totally dismiss them, but I think they don't really count when, when it matters. Limerick were coming into, we were starting to see signs of the real Limerick uh, in the last two rounds of the league, and they're, they're favourites for a reason. I think they're the all. I, I, I think it would be huge for this group of players to do the back to back, and it has been very, very difficult for any county outside Kilkenny to do it in hurling over the last two decades. I mean, Cork in the mid noughties are the only other ones to do it. So I think that would confirm their greatness as a team if they could do it this year. So, Michael, are you going to give us anything different? Or are you going with the lads? Uh, no, I think Galway are an absolute certainty to win Leinster. Um, they're a bigger certainty to win Leinster than Limerick are to win Munster, but I still think Limerick will win Munster. I think Waterford could potentially 
uh, go on a run uh, and win three or four games, but I still would probably see a Limerick Galway final with Limerick winning. And just as like none of those are very original uh, views, but if if someone was looking for kind of an outside bet for someone maybe for Hurler Deer, I think Brian Cannon from Galway would be uh, a good bet at big odds. Uh, I think he's one of the most informed players at the moment. I think he's nearly becoming nearly Galway's most important forward at this stage. And that's a fair statement in a forward line with Connor Whelan and Cottle Mannion and potentially Joe Canning. So I think, yeah, I think someone like someone like that for Hurler the year. And even like the McDonough Cup kicks off this weekend as well. And there's some brilliant games this weekend. Kerry are playing down this weekend. Basically, you'd imagine the winner would be in the, the McDonough Cup final. So that's a huge game this weekend. And uh, yeah, just a, a feast of a feast of hurling to come. I can't, can't wait for it to kick off. Oh, it sets it up very nicely. I'd like to thank Michael, Frank and John for joining us in our throwing championship preview in association with Board Gosh Energy. We'll be back next Monday with another podcast reviewing all the weekend's action. And in the meantime, you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud or listen on independent.ie. So until next time, thanks for listening and goodbye. Board Gosh Energy, proud sponsors of the GAA All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship and GAA Legends Tour Series of Crow Park. Hashtag hurling to the core.